Greetings, everybody. This is going to be Resurrections in the Bible, Part 2, Resurrection of Jesus. Uh, the first couple of resurrection things I did were the Old Testament. Now we're in the New Testament. Turn your King James Bible to John chapter 2. There are certain numbers in the Bible that pop up over and over and over. 1, 3, uh, 5, 6, 7, 10, 12, uh, 24, and 40. Those numbers seem to pop up a lot, and they have meanings. Um, you can, there's a number of books uh, that covers numbers in Scripture. Bullinger did a commentary on that. Ivan Panin, he was a Russian mathematician. He did one. Uh, there's others. I can't think of them offhand, but uh, if you're interested, I mean, you know, this is scholarly kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Three, uh, you know, people claim, oh, well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. No, the word Trinity isn't. T-R-I, N-I-T-Y, T-R-I is three. You've heard of a trident. It's a spear with three points. Uh, well, thing is, Trinity is not in the Bible, but Godhead is. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Man has a body, man has a soul, man has a spirit. We were made in God's image. I did an entire study on that. So, all right, let's read John chapter 2. Verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto them, They have no wine. You know, I've heard Baptist preachers say, Oh, that wasn't wine. No, that was Welch's grape juice. Praise the Jesus. Uh, you know, I used to perform weddings. I've done hundreds of weddings. And I'm not kidding. Hundreds. I couldn't even tell you how many weddings I've done. Uh, and I'll tell you this. Nobody's ever, nobody under the age of uh, like maybe 12 or 14 drinks grape juice at a wedding. No, wine. So, and besides, when you're in the desert, uh, grape juice is going to go bad. But wine will stay good for a while. Because the alcohol in it kills the bacteria. That's why Paul told Timothy to drink a little wine for his stomach's sake. So, Mary says they have no wine. So evidently they ran out. Verse 4. Jesus saith unto her, to Mary, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Wine would be an interesting study in the Bible. It really would. Maybe I'll do one one day. Uh, verse 5. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. If only Catholics who claim to love Mary would do what Mary says. Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. But instead of that, listening to Mary and Jesus, they uh, pray to a piece of concrete shaped like a woman and painted. I don't think that piece of concrete is going to hear you, but I don't know. Verse 6. And there were six, and there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. How big is a firkin? Uh, let's take a look. I'm not even sure. According to beer makers, a firkin is nine imperial gallons or eleven U.S. gallons. So, 
two or three firkins each. So yeah, that's, I'll tell you what, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, uh, they hold two or three firkins a piece and there's more than one of these stone pots. So you're talking uh, 30 or, oh no, about 60 gallons of wine. Uh, if I'm reading this correctly. Huh. So that's a lot of wine. That's enough for a big wedding. Yeah. I mean, there's, oh, I'm sorry, six water pots of stone containing two or three firkins apiece. Wow. So, 20. You're talking 120 gallons of wine. That's like two 55-gallon drums of wine. That's a lot of, this, uh, that's a, that's enough for a big wedding, boy, I'll tell you that. Jesus saith, verse 7, Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw it now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Now I wonder what these servants thought when, you know, they put water in and out comes wine. You know, I mean, boy, I, that's one heck of a miracle, huh? And all right, so the governor of the feast calls the bridegroom and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This is why it's not grape juice. You know, people buy some good liquor in the beginning, and then once everybody's had a few drinks, they bring out the what they call the rot gut, the bad stuff, the not so good stuff. But this, the, the, the governor of the feast is like, wow, you know, you, you kept the good stuff for the end. 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. You know, uh, wine at the Last Supper signifies blood and the wedding probably represents the marriage supper of the lamb where Christ marries his bride, the church. You know, so everything the Bible has is sometimes it's literal, sometimes it's symbolic. All right, so verse 12. And this he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Did you know Jerusalem's on seven hills, seven mountains, just like Rome? Oh, yeah. Um, when the Bible in Revelation talks about uh, the woman sits on seven hills, yeah. Look up uh, cities set on seven hills. You'll see Moscow, Seattle. You know, Ma Moscow was communism. Seattle is Microsoft. Uh, yeah, I think it's, is it Microsoft? I forget. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, uh, Washington, D.C. is on there too. I'm not sure. Verse 14. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. What were the changers of money? Well, you know, they're the bankers, right? Um, people would come in with Roman coins and then the temple money changers would say, oh, no, 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 we can't put Roman coins into the temple. That's, you know, it's got an image of Caesar on it. We got to exchange that for a temple coin. And were they exchanging it two for one? 
you know? I mean, let's face it. If you had an ounce of silver as a coin, what do the money changers give you? Half an ounce? Quarter ounce? Just because it was a temple coin that was blessed by the rabbi and holy? I don't know. But uh, they sure didn't give you one-to-one, -one, that's for sure. Uh, another thing, too, when you would bring a sheep to the temple to be sacrificed, uh, they would find something wrong with it and say, well, you know, if you give me the, your sheep and some coinage, I'll uh, give you a sacred sheep that doesn't have the same problems to be sacrificed. And they probably just went ahead and sold that sheep to somebody else and got more coinage. All I know is Christ was not pleased. 15. And when he, Christ, had made a scourge of small cords, you're talking a whip, people, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the money, the changers' money and overthrew the tables. Uh, evidently, Jesus didn't read Dale Carnegie's book on how to win friends and influence people. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. He did not make he's not making friends here, trust me. Verse 16. And he said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house an house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? In other words, who do you think you are, buddy boy? Verse 19. Listen carefully. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Destroy this temple, and in three days... I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. Forty-six years they were building on this temple. And wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he, Jesus, but he spake of the temple of his body. You want a temple made of stone to worship with? Or do you want the temple of his body and his blood? I think that's a dumb question, but... Verse 22. When therefore he, Christ, when he was risen from the dead, risen from the dead, resurrection, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. All right, let's go to book, the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 1. We're going to read the whole chapter and then close out this part. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto them, unto him and saith unto them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have been with me three days, three days, and have nothing to eat. Uh, three days. Boy, that, that is mentioned a few times in the Bible, isn't it? Verse 3, And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way, for divers of them came from, a, from far. And his disciples answered him, From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. Word uh, number seven pops up a lot too. Seven days in a week, you know. Where do we get seven days in a week? 
That comes right out of Genesis, people. You know, people don't realize how much we do follow the Bible. They really don't. You know, six day God rested. I'm sorry, the seventh day. Uh, I'm sorry, God worked days one through six, and then on the seventh day he rested. That's where we get the word week from. Seven days. All right, so how many loaves have ye? And they said seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break, and gave to his disciples to set before them, and they did set, set them before the people. And they had a few small fishes, and he blessed and commanded to set them also before them. So they did eat and were filled and took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets. So from seven piece loaves of bread, you got seven baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 4,000, and he sent them away. And straightway he entered into a ship with his disciples and came into the parts of Dal Manutha. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him, trying to trick him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and saith, Why doth this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given unto this generation. I mean, can you imagine 4,000 people? You'd need a truckload of bread to feed that many people. You really would. I mean, come on. Uh, and I, I don't think there was a truckload of bread following Jesus to feed all these people. Verse 13. And he left them and entered into the ship again, departed to the other side. Now, his, now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he, Jesus, charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. Now, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian, he said that Herod was of the Edomites, Esau Edom, which uh, God doesn't say much good things about him. I don't think God says anything good about him. So beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. 16. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye, because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not, and having ears, hear ye not? And do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said unto him, Twelve. So, one time Jesus fed 5,000, another time he fed 4,000. So, five loaves fed 5,000, and baskets full of fragments, there were 12 of them. 12. One for each of the 12 tribes, right? 20. And when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, seven. And he said unto them, How is it then that you do not understand? All right, so in Mark 8, 12, And he, Jesus, sighed deeply in his spirit and saith, Why doth this generation seek after a sign, a miracle? Verily I say unto you, There shall no sign be given unto this generation. And he left them and entered into the ship again, departing, departed to the other side. Now his disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he, Jesus, charged them, saying, Take heed, pay attention, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reason among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And I'm repeating this because it's important. 
All right, so let's go down to uh, Matthew has a good explanation here. Matthew 16, 6. Uh, it's the same thing talking about here. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven, the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Matthew 16, 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And if you look into uh, leaven, uh, let's see. Yeah, Matthew 16, 11. How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, but uh, that ye should Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Hmm. Uh, let's see. In 1 Corinthians 5, 8, we're told, Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and and truth and jesus said he was the bread of life all right let's go back to matthew 8. uh let's see all right and in verse 21 and he said to them how is it that you do not understand because he was talking about the not the leaven of bread but of the doctrines the belief systems of the pharisees and of the sadducees Verse 22, Mark 8, 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked and said, I see men as trees walking. After that he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly and he sent him away to his house saying neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town and jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of caesarea philippi caesarea i think that's in reference to caesar because the romans had conquered the area and kind of renamed some things so and by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But some say Elias, Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Who do you say I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ, which is the Greek rendering of Messiah. Verse 30. And he, Christ, charged them that they should tell no man of him, at least not at this time. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man, now listen carefully, listen carefully, we're going to read this twice. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days, rise again. Verse 31, Mark 8. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed, well, his body, and after three days, rise again. We're talking about a resurrection after three days. And he spake that open, uh, saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he, Jesus, had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. Wow. Uh, Jesus is calling the first pope Satan. That's a, uh, that's a knock on the Catholic Church. Because, you know, they don't believe the Bible anymore. Whatever the pope says is better than the words of Jesus. So, in their opinion, anyways. 
He rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. People, if, you're, if you die for Christ, that is a guaranteed ticket to the kingdom. Guaranteed. Words of Jesus right here, and I believe every word. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. You know, over 30 years ago, I knew that there was a very real possibility I'd have to die for Christ. I've known this. I've known this since at least 1990, 91. It might happen. But you know what? I'm almost 70 years old, so... Uh, yeah. Verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Verse 38. Listen carefully. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation... Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in his glory, when he cometh in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. You know, there's holy angels and there's unholy angels. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is going to be Resurrections of the Bible, New Testament, part two of the resurrection of Jesus. I'm just laying the groundwork. We haven't even, you know, I've got a lot more to go here. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.